Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Beyond the pandemic, ensuring business continuity while adopting an anti-bribery mindset. Organized for you by NTC Learning Hub. My name is Bella and I am the MC for today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items for you to participate in today's event. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the Q&A icon in the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these questions and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Do take note that today's session will be recorded. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce today's speakers. Our first speaker is Mr. Jaden Ho. Mr. Jaden Ho graduated with a Master of Science in Quality Management. He also possessed a graduate diploma in Quality Management, an advanced diploma in Industrial Engineering, and a diploma in Mechanical Engineering. He is also a Certified Quality and Reliability Engineer, a Registered Lead Auditor with IRCA, QSA, and JRCA. He is also a qualified trainer for PSB, SQI, SQI International, and NTC Learning Hub in the areas of quality management and ISO related courses. Our second speaker is D.N. Kanan. Mr. D.N. Kanan graduated with a Master of Science in Precision Engineering from NTU and a bachelor's degree in Mechanical Engineering. He possessed three diplomas in quality control, quality assurance, and TQM. He is also a registered lead auditor and trainer in the field of quality, health, safety, and environment and related management systems. He is an experienced consultant in the field of business, quality, environmental, health, and safety management. Now I'll pass the time to our speakers. Hello, a very good morning. Yes, this is Jaden Ho. Welcome to the uh, webinar and is being made possible with the uh, support from uh, Learning Hub, as well as a very, very uh, good morning to everyone who is joining us. Right, uh, I'm supposedly to provide you with an introduction to today's seminar, and we worded the word beyond the pandemic. I think everyone is aware we are able to see one another now to Zoom, to Teams, to various social media means because of a pandemic. And uh, can everyone just uh, think about it? Is pandemic a disaster? Yes, I believe so. I think by now we're about one and a half to two years stranded in our homeland, in our home, working from homes with some inconveniences, I would have to say, I think we all agree the current pandemic has given us something to think about. Now, um, ISO 22301, dated year 2019. Now, we are supposedly to share with you two very important standards in today's world. I said important is basically because we are looking into a business continuity model for our businesses. Um, I believe the majority of you joining us uh, works for a company, owns a company, runs your operations day to day. Now, regardless of the industry that you guys are in, we are now looking at how do we provide confidence to our customers, our stakeholders, interested parties, anyone who is interested to work with us, a sense of continuity in our business. Now, um, I think we have been talking about many industries, many um, businesses being affected by this current pandemic. And not forgetting, you know, we do have other disasters that may actually affect an op operation of a company. How about power outage that affects your IT server, your server room? How about transport disruptions? I have seen a client of mine, um, you know, they actually brings in workers from across the causeway, across JB every day. Um, hundreds of workers are traveling towards Singapore to work. Now, there was once an incident that happens that, you know, two buses actually break down along the highway in Malaysia and the workers I would, wouldn't able to come in. A total shift breakdown at that time for a manufacturing industry that is tremendous. How about a sabotage? And, you know, looking at what we have been uh, preparing ourselves, SG secure programs, terrorism, bomb threats. Now, these are possible potential disasters that certainly will affect our businesses. Now, 
how does 22301 actually help us? Now, an ISO standard, I think by the time when people talk about ISO standards, I think majority of you guys, ladies and gentlemen, joining us today will have heard of ISO 9001. Well, it's a very, it's one of the oldest ISO standards. People know it has a quality management system. But very unfortunately, I have heard recently that clients are asking suppliers, contractors for a business continuity plan. Hey, we are facing a pandemic. You have labor shortages. You have equipment supplies. You have material supplies that wouldn't come in. Look at chip shortages. It affects everybody, commercial, industrial. What do we do? As a manufacturer of the chips, has a main service provider for your customers. Do we need to have a BCM? Yes, I think the trend today is looking into a BCM that could actually support us, that could actually provide a backup to certain of our key operations. Now, let me just quote you some statements from a three uh, uh, important people. There were some researchers you know, that were actually telling us it's a statement made, companies that do not resume your operations within 10 days of a disaster do not really going to survive most of the time. And there was also a researcher that says, you know, a companies without a disaster recovery plan usually has only a survival rate of less than 10%. And let's bring in Mr. Jaya Kumar, our deputy PM, Back in November 7, 2008, he did highlighted that government tenders for key services, for essential services at that time, are supposedly to look at suppliers, those who tenders, that have actually a BCM as part of their procurement processes. So therefore, BCM is getting important. Both the governments, semi-governments, private institutions are all looking into a purchasing policy that includes BCM for the suppliers. And this particularly shows the importance of 22,301 in today's market, especially when a pandemic is raging us at this moment of time. Yes. Now, similarly to other management systems, ISO 22301 actually hinges very heavily on an ISO 9000 framework. So whoever starts to get worried now, hey, how do I implement a BCM? BCM looks, sounds rather a very complicated system. It is a, is it going to be a tough uh, system to, to, to really implement? No, not really. If you were to look at the Annex XL, which is the model for ISO 9001, 22301 actually follows very closely to the, to the model of um, um, the ISO 9001. So companies who are interested, do feel free, ask us questions if you have in the Q&A sessions. If you do have already some plans or do you already have a BCM in place to protect you, to support you, to provide continuity in your business operations, you may wish to know more about how to make it more mature how to continually improve upon the system to give more confidence to your stakeholders. Now, one of the main important thing about 22301 today is that you could get an accreditation to it. You could get an assessment. You could get a certification board to actually award you with a recognition. Now, what does this entail? It allows you to stand above many of your competitors. Hey, today, this particular organization has a BCM, it provides you with slightly more trust in all, when you take up a business. I've got a client just recently, I think, um, he, he was in the cleaning industry. Now, who has ever imagined that a cleaning company that does housekeeping, that does a, a, a cleaning premise for commercial premises, um, they have clients that ask them for a BCM. Now, what, what does the BCM actually say? It says a business continuity management system. And one of those key things, if you look at the next slide, you should be able to see uh, what I'm looking at, what I'm trying to say, right? Now, basically, it comprises of a few key requirements, one of which is a business impact analysis. Now, what does a business impact analysis actually entail? Basically, it allows us to look into our key aspects of our businesses, review the risk, 
review the risks that possibly would happen when a pandemic occurs, when a power outage occurs, when there's an IT failure, what happens? Now, more and more companies today are relying heavily on ITs, IT support. What happens if there is a failure? Many data goes unchecked. How about securities of data? Data security is getting important as well. What do we do? How do we convince customers that their data is still being protected? Now, if we were to have a BCP, a business continuity plan, this would be heavily considered, right? In the next few slides, you should be able to see very clearly what I mean by the key stages of a BCP, yes? Now, if you can see number item five, starting from item five, six, and seven, we emphasize very heavily on the risk assessment mindset. Now, management has to adopt a risk management mindset to basically embark on a very, very good and mature, and possibly I use the word effective BCP, okay? To have a business continuity plan that is actually stated in clause number eight over here in this particular slide, as you can see, basically consists of a various stages of requirements for key processes. Now, can we assume now, if we are looking into an industry that provides some key services, very essential services to a statutory board, to your end customers, who is supposedly to have a 24 hours production. No line down is allowed. They have to continue the operations due to equipments, due to infrastructure constraints. A business continuity plan could actually very, very much actually emphasize your commitment towards helping them to run the business. All right. Now, steps for implementing 22301 are all being covered in our various uh, uh, service scopes within a learning hub. The next slide would actually tell you what are those basic services that we are able to uh, provide you with. Huh? Okay. Now, obtaining 22301 certification could be in your mind now, if not in the very near future. Uh, we could see from the... Uh, practitioners' feedbacks, from clients' feedbacks, from uh, people like us, you know, we, we are system auditors, we move around, we are hearing management staff, we are hearing top management stakeholders, um, embarking a little bit on business impact analysis and possibly towards BCM implementation. Now to get 22301, we do have uh, courses generated, like you can see, we do have a two days awareness course to equip staff with a more detailed know-how of how to implement a 22301. What are the key ingredients? What are the things that we have to do to provide ourselves with a good business impact assessments? How do staff participate in these programs? Now, I think I can talk to 5 p.m. today and tell you that, hey, we are the experts in BCM, but it doesn't help the company at all. The one who are really the experts to help your company to implement a BCM basically are the staff themselves. The one who runs the operations, the one who plans, the one who designs the operations. Now, these are the people that we want to train. All right. Now, this is an awareness course that provides you with a guidance from step one all the way to the final step of implementing a BCM. Now, we do have also courses to equip auditors. Now, we do have systems. We have a very good systems. We need internal auditors to be trained to self-check our system. Right Now, the next course that we are talking about, well, is an internal auditor course. Basically, I think we all know internal auditors we are training these people to do a self-check on your own BCP. Now, who says a BCP is, can be done in a year and it will last to 10 years? No, nobody dares to say that. In fact, for a good business continuity plan to work, it should not be like that. It should be continually reviewed, improved, upgraded, accepted and implemented. So therefore, an auditor has always to have the continual improvement mindset to improve the system all the time. All right. Now, the other services that uh, I would uh, wish to share with you would be the consultancy services that we do. Now, um, we all acknowledge that companies from an SME to an MNC, you do have different risks. You do face different um, disasters at different timing, of course. We do acknowledge that a BCP 
would be different from one industry to the next industry, from company A to company B or company C. So therefore, a customized approach to preparing the BCP is necessary. There was one gentleman who asked me a few months ago, hey, Mr. Jaden, I wish to have a BCP. Can I buy one from you? I said, sorry, we don't sell BCPs. We, we try getting it off NTUC shelf or cold storage. I'm sure you couldn't get it because there's no customized BCP for sale. Otherwise, I'll be a rich man today sitting here, right? Now, a BCP has to be written. A BCP has to be designed with participation of your own variable staff. So therefore, after training your staff, a good consultancy program would lead you towards a BCP. Um, I would pass it to my speaker to speak on another very important standard on anti-bribery. But before I end that, just take note of what is stated in our slide at the moment of time. There is a very good uh, government support at this moment of time. As you know, our government procurement policy setting up BCM has a requirements. So they are actually given a very good 80% support for an industry who wish to embark on a BCM. This is the right time to go for it. This is the right time to seriously consider what is next after the pandemic. Yes, um, with this, I shall pass on to my colleague, Mr. Kanan, to share with you on another very important standard, which is the anti-bribery system. Yes, thank you, Mr. Thank you Mr. Jaden. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. Thanks for attending this. Uh, I'll be introducing the another uh, very important standard, which is ISO 37001-2016. In fact, uh, this standard released in 2016, but recently uh, during pandemic uh, stage, as well as the current uh, market situation, this standard become more common and common. Uh, it's focusing more on anti-bribery and it gives you the guideline. It's not telling you how to control the uh, bribery activities inside the organization. Again, it's a guidance, same as other international standards. As uh, Jaden mentioned that uh, you know, these two standards become a very hot cake in the uh, market now and it's become part of the supplier evaluation. In fact, a few of my clients came across uh, saying that what this standard calls for, because they got a questionnaire from their customers uh, as part of supplier evaluation. So there was a day customer used to ask uh, when they send the questionnaire to the supplier, whether you have ISO 9001 or IO OSHA's 18001, which is no more. Now they call it ISO 45001. These are the quite common standard usually they ask for. Recently, I also quite surprised for the last two, three years that all these uh, customers, when they select the suppliers, they evaluate in terms of uh, business continuity management as well as anti-bribery management system. This standard is there for the last three, four years, but uh, fortunately it was not famous. I could say fortunately it was not famous in Singapore. Uh, we are pretty safe in this uh, aspect. Uh, I won't say 100%, but uh, we are comparatively uh, no, good in position. Uh, but if this standard is quite famous in other countries, I do not want to mention uh, which other countries, but uh, currently it become more and more common in uh, Singapore uh, for implementing this standard to demonstrate our anti-bribery commitment. Basically, you are trying to establish, implement, and daily operation to ensure that there is no anti-bribery uh, there is no bribery related activities so this standard is not focusing on fraud or money laundering all this kind of thing it's mainly focusing on bribery activities inside that organization yeah. it's also developed by the international organization for standardization in fact singapore standard also already adopted uh, this standard uh, we have a singapore uh, version uh, we call it the ss iso 37001 2016 Again, the same thing, basically this management system is pretty similar with uh, ISO 9001 and other international standard. And I believe uh, most of you today are aware that all the international standard follow same structure, which we call it high level structure. So that uh, 
uh, nowadays uh, seeing a one management system in the organization it's uh, not really common uh, people started adopting organizations started adopting more than one standard to demonstrate their compliance towards different uh, requirements for example quality management system just now mr jaden mentioned uh, uh, business continuity management system you know so different uh, scope has to be demonstrated to win the situation uh, in the competitive market actually again this standard can be integrated with any kind of standards which is going to give us the flexibility you may be wondering hey if i have uh, too many standards in my company does it going to affect my operation costs certainly not that is the reason the international organization standardization standardize the standards and make it a high level structure which is a plan do check act in other words whatever the standard you open up you are going to see the same structure which i am showing you on the screen so it's applicable in the bcm as well is applicable in the iso 37001 as well it's the same structure for iso 9000 which is very common as mr jaden mentioned so its integration is going to be much 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 easier and it's going to be a integrated approach in the implementation as well when i say integrated approach your documentation going to be integrated your policy can be integrated your uh, internal audit can be integrated your management review can be all in one so this is how you can uh, know minimize your operational uh, issues and uh, not to have a uh, many documentation inside the organization right so this is the high level structure uh, benefits when it comes to 37001 uh, promote trust and confidence yes uh, recently i came across uh, many uh, foreign investors came into singapore and um, it's become a more and more competition uh, in the business aspects compared to 5 to 6 years ago uh, when it comes to competition uh, uh, it is mainly on the pricing and uh, there are different approach can be used to win the contracts so when i say different approach i believe you you may know what i'm trying to uh, address it so to avoid this kind of uh, no uh, unwanted uh, approaches so we have to implement the anti bribery management system to demonstrate our compliance to demonstrate our commitment towards this topic right timely detection and addressing of bribery related issues do not mistaken this is not only talking about finance department it's also talking about all other departments there is no very important department and least important department in fact from hr on all the way to operation and delivery guys until the security level we have to focus on this when i say anti bribery management system it's not focusing on finance department alone yeah maintain the organization reputation obviously yes actually once you certify to the standard uh, in fact i could say that not many certification body could offer uh, this certification uh, they are slowly getting into it it's not that common as like uh, 9001 and 14001 all the standards it's i could say it's a pretty new uh, to the market better management of funds inside the organization room for improvement towards anti bribery management system again same like uh, implementing the 37001 it's same like other international standard you may need to form a team uh, yeah the consultant is not going to do a magic but its consultant is going to guide you guys but as jaden mentioned uh, it's your own operational team is the one going to show the importance and uh, give the importance and implement iso 37001 again it comes to the uh, development of documentation based on iso 37001 guidelines Which can be seen in the standard itself. Again, you will be developing the management system based on plan, do, check, act. When it comes to do, you will be implementing all these uh, procedures. When it comes to check, you will be implementing an internal audit and see whether uh, we are in a good position. Uh, comes to uh, ISO thirty seven thousand one, and finally, you are trying to look at the continual improvement part. Yeah. so you may be developing some uh, standard procedures like a whistle blowing procedures investigation procedures same like other standards so there are specific requirements in iso 37000 but they still follow the structure of plan do check act okay so the so same thing goes to again uh, in this standard uh, since i said pretty new to the market iso 37001 awareness training uh, one day training uh, 
uh, covers the whole requirements and uh, upon completing this uh, awareness training i believe the team has to be able to uh, implement the standard uh, by themselves or they should be able to understand their requirements uh, easily when uh, when they go work with their consultant uh, this is a one day training is designed to share the concept of implementation again the, this standard also is uh, talking about internal auditing same like other international standards uh, it's coming under checkpoint where you have to do an internal audit to verify your implementation is effective and compliant comes to the internal audit as you all are aware that the internal auditor has to be qualified and competent enough so this two days course designed to make sure that uh, you no know, qualified and certified as an internal auditor for iso 37001 so in this training, we will be touching on uh, more on uh, implementation part, as well as checking off key points uh, during the internal audits and how to approach the audit team and get the evidences to come to the conclusion whether it's complied or effective enough actually. So this two day session is inclusive of some exercise case studies. Same like what Mr. Jaden mentioned, this is a consultancy service. Each projects will be different. This depends on the organization. So we usually take about six to eight months time to complete the project. And uh, again, we will be guiding you from the policy development all the way to the successful implementation, which could, uh, which could uh, include uh, no guidance on developing the documentation, which could include the you know, risk-based approach because all the international standard talking about risk-based approach and since uh, our support to this standard is going to be quite high uh, since this standard is quite new and uh, not uh, very common among uh, in the market as well as the certification body uh, i believe the below details gives again the government gives 80 percent grant in this pandemic period so that's going to help uh, all the organization to move towards uh, these two international standards Um, hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, thank you, Kanan, and thank, thank you, you. Uh, for, <laughs> for, uh, for, for leading this uh, webinar. And uh, um, hi, my name is Sarah. I'm from Learning Hub Sales. Um, to, um, I'm actually here to uh, let you all know, like, you know, what we do have on offer other than the consultancy portion that uh, Kanan and Fort Wing has uh, told us about. We also offer the training and uh, in terms of um, awareness training and the internal auditor training as well. So exclusively only for this uh, webinar, attendees of this webinar, we are offering a 20% off the bundle. Uh, if you take um, either of the standards, uh, both courses together, the price reflected here is um, for, is the price that's after this 20% off. So um, we do have some classes uh, coming up and uh, we, we hope that, um, you know, after this thing, when you go back and um, you thought that, you know, how, how you should get started and things like that, maybe you can, you know, give us a call and uh, as well as to understand um, you know, how this whole thing works, attend the course, you know, how to get on the consultancy portion as well. So, um, Maybe also at the same time, you probably in your organization, you have already identified, you know, how you want to embark on the systems, you have identified the project managers, you know, take on all these things as well. We will also be able to uh, come in, you know, and uh, to maybe, you know, go together with you in terms of, you know, how to really move along your project, you know, um, yeah, basically, yeah, that's about it. Um, do let us know. Uh, contact us. You can um, you can contact if you have any um, you know, if you know any of my sales colleagues or any of my other colleagues here at, at Learning Hub, you can contact them as well. Or I will also be uh leaving my details shortly in the chat, and then you can uh, just um, do connect with us lah. <laughs> right. So uh. Of course, I think you probably have some questions moving on from here. 
So uh, that's about it that I have for you. Uh, do know that, of course, there are certain terms and conditions. Uh, these are for classes until 30th uh, November. But uh, of course, if you, like I said, if you have, you know, planning, you know, long-term planning to embark on these projects, do speak to us and then we will definitely, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, we will look into it. And then after that, you know, to probably, you know, suit what you need. Okay, so uh, I'm giving this back to Bella for Q&A. Thank you, Mr. Jaden, Mr. Kanan, and Ms. Heng for the wonderful presentation. We will now proceed to answer the questions submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit your question through the Q&A icon in the control panel. So let's invite Mr. Jaden and Mr. Kanan to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Kanan, um, yeah. there's actually a question that was asked by one of the participation uh, participants, Mr. Ang. Uh, what do you mean by easily integrating 37,000 to 27,000? Would you take that? Uh, yeah, uh, as mentioned uh, in the slide itself, all the standards are following high level structure. So even the clauses and approach which you follow the plan do check act. So if you have an existing management system, not only ISO 9001, not only ISO 27001, I have mentioned these two standards as an example. Uh, regardless of whatever the standards, uh, you should be able to integrate it. In fact, the integrated management system gives, uh, gives you a more uh, flexibility of uh, you know, maintaining a simplest uh, documentation and uh, demonstrating more than one standard implementation. That is a main advantage when it comes to integration. Yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Kanan or Mr. Jaden, there's another question. How does the grant work for consultancy? Uh, uh, the grant is given by Enterprise uh, Development Grant, which is called ETG. Uh, they are giving about 80% of the grant. So when you apply online, uh, you this uh, standard adoption coming under market access, uh, when you apply online, uh, you have to submit the consultancy quotation as well as the certification body uh, proposals. So based on the evaluation, they will be providing you 80% of the grant. Upon completion of a project and successful certification, you have to claim back the 80% of the grant. The initial approval will be given. Upon initial approval, you can start the project. And completion of the project, you can claim back all the 80% grant, whatever the percentage approved. Okay, then we will have another. We have another question that asks, when is the grant ending? Uh, the grant uh, supposed to end in September two thousand twenty-one, but during the budget two thousand twenty-one, they extended until thirty-first March two thousand twenty-two. There is a question by uh, one of the participants asking, "Is it possible to integrate?" Uh, into our ISO 28000 and TAPA security system for BCM? Absolutely possible, actually. There are some management criteria, management requirements, uh, which can be integrated. The level of integration can be decided during the project stage. There is also a question that asks, uh, is there any ISO standard for governance alongside with anti-bribery? I don't see in uh, any standards here. Yeah. There's another question that asks, are we able to choose any of the ISO that is applicable to us? Yes. Yeah, okay. so, maybe yeah, I yeah. shall take up that question yeah. from yeah. Ms. Stalin, Ms. Gan. Uh, yes, apparently this question is very uh, generic and is open. I believe you are specifically asking about anti-bribery as well as the VCM standard that we are uh, launching today. Um, however, to answer that question specifically, you are able to choose the right ISO standard for your organization, that's of course. Now, if you were to feel that most of your clients today are more interested in business sustainability, uh, continuation of your businesses to encourage 
participation from staff to ensure that your system is able to support your, your, your customer's uh, objective, then possibly a BCM would be more suitable than an anti-bribery. Of course, anti-bribery doesn't end today. It's going to be starting today, in fact, and last forever. Um, if you can see, looking at certain news, looking at the... Um, what uh, certain countries are doing, you know, fighting bribery is, uh, is actually one of the key things for very, very much local governments today. Um, in fact, if you are to ask, even if you are interested in ISO 9000 or ISO 14000 or ISO 45000, you could always approach our sales representative. We are able to, to assist you in um, how to approach, how to choose how to adopt the right ISO standards for your organization. Yeah, anything that's relating to ISO, give us a call. Yes, please, Bella. Okay, uh, we have another question. Is it necessary for companies to have BCM and anti-bribery systems? No. Um, basically, BCM, anti-bribery, if you were to... Um, got certain of the requirements from us earlier, it is actually a very much voluntary standards. If the question is, hey, is it a must um, to do a business in Singapore or in the world? The answer is no. Um, has the government been pushing? Yes, the government is encouraging most of us to set up a BCM. As I said, even Mr. Jayakumar, our deputy PM, has mentioned that already very much in 2008. He wanted the government procuring, procurement departments for essential services to strictly look at suppliers who could able to provide a good BCP. So again, it's a starting point. It's never going to end. The requirement is going to be uh, getting uh, more stringent. The requirement is going to be getting more and more. I think your, your customers will be asking you for a BCP more than ever uh, during and possibly post-COVID times. You know, And um, therefore, it is always how to rise above your competitor? Uh, that is the question now, rather than is there a need for us to have one? Um, I think we all agree. It's just like a fire breakout emergency preparedness. Why do we need to have a fire evacuation plan? Why do we need to have our cert team trained? Is to target emergencies. Yes. So this is what possibly would happen in the near future. No one predicted ISO 9000 to be that famous today when it was launched in 1987. Look at what ISO 9000 has done to the world. Yes, so this is the upcoming thing, I believe. Yes. Okay, so do, do we need consultancy services to get the ISO certification? Mm, Kanan, you want to take this up? Uh, obviously, uh, uh, I would say yes or no. If you people have uh, implemented the management system for uh, many years, it's pretty good that uh, you have a good experience. And that is how the international organization standardization make it more easier way uh, and uh, follow the same structure. You could be able to do it. However, when it comes to uh, consultant support, uh, obviously, I would uh, say that it's going to help you in the project to make it smooth and uh, more uh, you know, effective way of implementation. Yeah. So... Uh, it is not mandatory to engage a consultant, but it, it's good to you know, always uh, mingle with the expert so that the expert will lead you to the right direction and get it, make, it in a, make it in a less hassle way of uh, successful implementation. Okay, there is also another question that asks, what is the Local Jurisdiction Bribery Act in Singapore? Mm, there are a few uh, bribery acts, almost three bribery acts are uh, there. Uh, which is not really, you know, uh, judicial act, I agree, but uh, we are not very sure about it. But when we implement this ISO 37001, it's a very good question. We have to identify all this uh, applicable uh, judicial act, and we need to make sure the, you know, we also comply with all these requirements. I think that is all for the question today. Um, so on, there's one there's one question that I wish to uh, elaborate. Is it okay, Bella? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you see, there was this question about consultation. Um, now, a good consultancy project would actually do a customized BCP for you, uh, anti-bribery systems for you. Um, not necessarily a generic one like what I said. You know, you could buy off the shelf of NTUs 
epilepsy and things like that. So someone has to go in with an independent point of view to actually study your businesses, uh, your essential services, the key supporting pillars of your organization, and starts to develop a business impact analysis for you. So we do offer consultancy in two aspects. One is a very basic approach to develop a BCP, to satisfies the stakeholders' requirements, to satisfy your client requirements. The other one is to lead you towards certification. There was a lady who is asking the questions on how does, um, uh, how do we choose the right ISO? Now, the thing is this, for a BCM, there's one thing good about BCM is if you guys decides not to go towards a certification in the long run, you could actually develop a basic BCP. Now, a basic BCP, develops a system for you to react to disasters recovery plan. It also allows your guys to be trained periodically to test the plan. So it kind of encourages staff to be more aware of what is business continuity. Yes? Yeah. Uh, what is the estimate cost for certification? That is uh, Mr. Ang's question. Let me just take it over. Um, there's no specific cost uh, for every targeted industries, simply of two reasons, size, complexity of the organization differs. So a BCP depends on how many key essential activities, like I said. If you are an MNC, you have hundreds of key activities. Possibly to develop the BCP, it takes a certain longer time, and there goes the cost. On the average, a full certification towards a system certification should last, should, should be about ten to $12,000. 10 to 12K, a simple BCP that works miracles, but to further is a kind of a stepping stone to further improvement would possibly cost five to $6,000. Um, the good thing is today we are offering a 20% uh, discount from Learning Hub, as well as you could tap into the grants, eh? the 80% grant uh, that is given to us to develop our system. So that's, that's good cool. news. And... Um, just, just take note of it, the deadline for the grant is uh, March 2022. Yes, yes. Right, Bella? Okay. So that is all for today's questions. So thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, Beyond the Pandemic, Ensuring Business Continuity While Adopting an Anti-Bribery Mindset. Ms. Uh, Sarah Heng has already has already placed in her contact information for everyone. So if you have any questions, you can contact her. And also on behalf of NTC Learning Hub and our presenters, thank you for joining us today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. And thank see you. you guys very soon. Thank you.